Okay, we're back on Mr. Holsey's case. Uh, Mr. Holsey's here, counselor here. We're outside the presence of the jury. The jury's told us that they have a verdict. Um, we told them we would announce it at two o'clock. Do we have all our jurors here? So we're in a position now, we're gonna uh, be able to announce it in, in the next few minutes. Anything from the state's perspective we need to talk about before we bring the jury in? No, thank you. How about from the defense perspective? No, sir, thank you. Okay, um, all right, so what we're gonna do since I said it was gonna be two o'clock, we'll give it another few minutes, and then we're gonna bring the jury in and we'll announce the verdict at that time. So I'm gonna step off and expect at two o'clock to have the jury brought in and we'll get going. So we got- Two o'clock that time? Basically that time, five minutes from now. Okay. I think that may be a minute or so slow, so about five minutes from now, all right? Okay, we'll see everybody in a few minutes. Let the record reflect the presence of the jury panel, the defendant, and counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached your verdicts in this matter? Uh, if the foreperson could hand the verdict forms to the bailiff, please. Clerk will read the verdicts. Verdict count one. We, the jury, duly and fairly sworn and not guilty of having titled action of Donald Ellis to be granted sentence as to count one, first degree murder, as follows. Guilty. On a court person, jury number 17. Verdict count two. We, the jury, duly and fairly sworn in the above entitled action of Connor Ellis to be granted the sentence as to count two, attempted first degree murder, as follows. Guilty. Signed, court person, jury number 17. Are these your true verdicts? What say you one and all? Yes. Yes. Does anyone wish to poll the jury? No. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do now is Sarah Lynn's going to ask you the same question about whether it is your verdict, but she's going to ask you individually that same question. Juror number one, are these your true verdicts? Yes, ma'am. Juror number two, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number three, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number five, are these your true verdicts? Yes, ma'am. We want to make sure we get the numbers right. Juror number nine, are these your true verdicts? Juror number 10, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 11, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 13, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 14, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 15, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 6. Juror number 17, are these your true verdicts? Yes. Juror number 18, are these your true verdicts? Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, guilty verdict means that we will move to our second phase of the trial, and that's going to start tomorrow. Um, so you are going to be released um, for the day in a moment. A couple things that are important to remember. The admonition is still in effect. So you are not to talk about the case. You are not to do any research. You are not to follow any media coverage. You need to make sure that you shield yourself from any information about the case that is not received in this courtroom. As I told you before, and I will be talking to you again about the possible phases of the trial, um, this means we move into the second phase. That phase, that's sometimes called the aggravation phase, is expected probably to last only um, a day in terms of the evidence that's presented to you tomorrow. And then as I told you before, depending on your verdict, that uh, we may move into a third phase or we may not. We're still on course schedule-wise. We're where, where we thought we would be when we told you that we expected the trial to go through the end of August. So we're still where we thought we would be and you should plan accordingly. So you are released for today only. When you come back tomorrow, we're gonna come back at 10.30, back here to courtroom 5C. We'll be rejoined by the jurors who were selected as alternates to hear evidence in the aggravation phase. You cannot talk to them or talk 
to each other about the case. So even though you have reached a verdict and obviously deliberated to do that, the minute you walk out the door today out of this courtroom, you can't talk about the case even with each other again until the next time you deliberate as part of the aggravation phase. And that also includes the jurors coming in. They didn't deliberate with you. They can't talk about the case. So it's very important to remember. So we're coming back tomorrow, 1030 back here. Until then, remember the admonition, and we'll see you tomorrow at 1030. Please stand for the jury. We are outside the presence of the jury panel. Please remain seated. Let's talk about this tomorrow. Thank you.
I'm not sure how it's incorrect. Well, let me step back. First of all, th these are the recommended capital jury instructions, so I'm typically going to default into them. Um, so that's going to guide a lot of um, the analysis here. But I, I don't think that as a basic matter, it's an incorrect statement of the law, either the role in determining facts or because the, the view that um, early release after 25 years is illusory. I don't know if there's anything you want to add. You cited the cases in the discussion. Anything you want to add to that? No, nothing else, Ron. Okay. Um, I, I don't believe that objection is well taken, and I am overruling that objection. Um, there's an objection to paragraph 4 um, that uh, the um, paragraph unnecessarily advises the jury that the defendant may get out of prison someday if, uh, if the jury fails to find at least one aggravating circumstance. Again, I believe that this is the standard jury instruction. I don't believe it is prejudicial or otherwise unfair to the defendant. So 